Today I'm going to be putting uh, trailer air on this dump truck. Same old Mac I'm always working on. So I'm going to pull this panel off here and drill a hole for the uh, trailer air button or dash valve. I got the bed up here. I'm going to mount a tractor protection valve, probably. I don't know if I want to mount it on the back of the cab because this cab's got its airbags. So I don't want it to come down too low and crush the things. I'm not sure exactly where where to mount it, but I gotta put a tractor protection valve on it. And you gotta run your lines back to your glad hands. Welder just put this hitch on the back, hitch plate. So I got mount glad hands and I gotta run trailer wiring too for the lights. So this is a nice kit from anythingtruck.com. It gives you the uh, your diagram and instructions. It's a really nice kit, comes with the airline. This is a PP7 style push pull valve. There's your tractor protection valve, check valves, fittings. There's different kits you can get, so this is the one we need. And uh, we'll just we'll just start from the top here and work our way down. What I'm gonna do here. As you can see, this top port's a supply on it. That needs to get teed into your supply on your new tractor valve. These are delivery valves on either side of this one. You can see they got some stuff going on here to cap this. I'm gonna pull that whole thing off and just put the right size cap on it to get rid of all that. And then I'm going to put my trailer valve right there. Control port of your, this is the PP7 valve, this is the PP1. So, this would be your control port. There you go, control. Control is going to go to delivery. And then the delivery port on the PP7 valve, that'll go down to your tractor protection valve. And then supply is going to hook into your supply line on the PP1. So it's going to hook in there like so. And actually on this truck here, it's, it's already got a hole, like a boss behind there. You can feel where it's, it's cut out for that. You just got to cut this, this thin metal plate out here. And then I'll, I'll, hook, my, I'll hook my lines up. And then we'll run down probably through the firewall and go down around down to the protection valve. I'm going to figure out where I want to mount that. And from there, we got to hook up some. We got to hook some lines up from the foot valve. So we got to find out where our secondary and primary ports are on that or lines and T into that. So that'll be the next thing. All right, so there she's mounted. A lot going on in here. This is your, uh, this would be supply, goes to supply. I teed it in over there, but it's it's hooked to supply off your tractor valve and your trailer valve. They're, those are hooked together, those are supply, that's three eighths. Then you have a delivery port coming off here, off your tractor valve. That's quarter inch. That's gonna go here to your control port on your trailer valve. And then this 
delivery port on your trailer valve will go down to your tractor protection valve. That's three eighths. Delivery from the tra uh, trailer valve. Luckily, I found a port up in here to the firewall. Not to drill any holes. I just ran it behind this wiper linkage right here. That'll break it. And hook it right into our supply or our delivery port. I need two hands. Next, you want to take your charger protection valve <clears throat> and these two ports on the back here, 22 and 21, you want to install these uh, quick release valves. I call them check valves, but I guess they're more accurately uh, quick release valves. So put some of this uh, Loctite or Teflon tape on here. The valve on the dash is going to go to port number 14. And then this port here is for a stoplight switch. So you can run a separate stoplight switch off of your trailers off of this port. I'm going to wire right into the uh, brake lights on the back of the truck for our uh, trailer receptacle. This port on the bottom gets plugged. That's an auxiliary port. I'm not going to use it. And this is going to go, this is your delivery valve to, from your foot, your foot valve, secondary, primary. So this is your primary off the foot valve, secondary off the foot valve. So minor setback, we had to make a bracket. Didn't have a place to put this big valve on the side here or on the back of the cab, so I'm kind of like right in the middle. And I just made a made a plate and extended it out over because the boss on the valve is not wide enough to get on this cross member here. Or it's too wide for that cross member. So this will work fine. And uh, I can still run my valves out. Run those lines straight down underneath the frame and then go alongside the right side here the whole way down and uh, next i'm going to hook up my uh, three eighths my three eighths delivery from my control valve up in the cab for my trailer my trailer valve i'm going to hook that up and then i'm going to find my secondary and primary Those circuits valve. figured out here and where they are. Go off the front brakes first. This will be your secondary system. Uh, follow it down. There's going to be a quick release valve. Normally they got them mounted in the center of the front cross member behind the bumper. The line on top, you're going to follow that one. The line on top of the valve, you're going to follow that uh, all the way back. 
This can really be a pain sometimes. Uh, this line, you can see it. Right there on the right, right by the motor mount, that line goes down and around, it comes up and it goes into the right side of this foot valve. So I need to tee into that and run a line over to my tractor protection valve. Is your primary and secondary. I think in like 1980, they went to secondary and primary systems on your foot valve. So it's two different circuits, much like a hydraulic brake circuit. In case you lose a brake line on the rear, you still got front brakes, a separate circuit. So over here, that side, that would be my uh, secondary. That goes to the front brakes. I've already run that back to my valve. I had to relocate my valve because the passenger side is just too close to the exhaust and I just decided to run it over on this side. So it's already hooked up and the control line from the dashboard. Um, you can trace lines back to this valve Something that's easier to do if you don't have a million fittings on here and you can get to them pretty easy is take off one of the lines and then hit your brakes. And when you hit your brakes, you can kind of narrow it down between primary and secondary because green's gonna be your primary. Red, the red arrow will be your secondary. So I pulled off uh, different fittings. Two of them were supplied from the tank, so I knew right away those for leaking air, so that couldn't have been the ones for me. I put them back on. I took uh, a couple more off and would just come in here and hit the brake and figured out which was my primary and secondary and I'm hooking them up accordingly. So uh, that's just a, a quick way to do it instead of tracing lines, which you might have to do anyways. But when you get back here on this particular truck, these can be confusing. So this is your supply for your chambers. So this releases your spring brakes, this whole setup here. This is the same valve, but it's on this side and this controls your service brakes. So this is your, this is your air. It splits off and goes to either side of your can, either can, and that's your service brakes. Same thing for this. This goes down to a, a T and feeds these smaller lines, which or what relieve the spring pressure so you can drive and the, the, uh, the uh, shoes release from the drums. So one of these is gonna be your uh, coming off your foot valve and another one's gonna be supplied air from a tank. Reason being they want these valves back here because when you get a signal, it's gonna allow a larger volume of air to reach these brakes more quickly instead of traveling from all the way back in front of the truck all the way back here to the axle. It's a, it's a relay valve. So the same principles, a small amount of air controls a large amount, same with electricity. But if you're trying to trace these lines, I mean, look at that. This appears up there, it can be difficult. So this this is a quick way to do it.
put them right there. And the other one down next to it. Control, trailer controls or service brakes. That's gonna go on the second port here. That's emergency brakes there. So that'll be the red glad hand, blue glad hand. So I'll make a mark on this one at the other end of the truck just so I know I'm not tracing them back either. it up to a trailer and see if it works. He's up. He's up to that and we'll be done. Push these through here. Okay, so here's my tail lights. Tail lights, clearance lights, and then to check my ground with a test light, I'm just gonna take the ground cable into the test light and put it on this. Far side over here, this is your ground. That just confirms I have a ground here in the white wire. Ground wire is your tail lights and clearance lights. White is your ground. Um, and then you can go through when there's a truck diagram. Uh, green and yellow are gonna be turn signals. Red's a stoplight. White's your ground, grounds or taillights. Blue, I believe it's auxiliary or I could run a trailer brake receptacle uh, or the trailer brake controller to the receptacle with that. Pretty simple, it's gonna go right there. And then we'll back it up to a trailer and test it. This is like a heavy truck. It's a round pin seven, so it's not a blade. But you can get adapters to 
adapt all this stuff down if you want. That's in there. We'll check our lights and we'll check our uh, trailer system here. I think it's the trailer. To be honest with you. Everything's hooked up here and everything is working with the air system, so that's good. Go. I want to see. This is the valve. This is the valve we're working with here. The Bendix 065706. If you want to go that route and get that valve, uh, it's pretty pretty easy to do. Uh, ready to pull the trailer now. 